Hi everyone, I'm Lauren Malhoy. I'm a technical marketing engineer with Cisco in the INSBU. And today I'm going to be talking about our new uh, vSphere web client plugin for uh, our automated networking, if you will. Some might call it ACI. Um, first of all, I'm just gonna do a demo, right? The whole thing's gonna be a demo, no slides. This is literally just a plugin that goes into your web UI. I know, that dreaded web UI, but it's actually gotten way better. Uh, way more reactive. It's kind of awesome these days, and it's getting even better, so I hear. I can do all sorts of things in this web UI. I can create a tenant, and I, I eventually will. <laughs> Let's say I call it SAS test. I could call it anything I want. It's arbitrary, but you will probably want to do something descriptive, right? So I've created a tenant. This is a logical container, kind of an administrative container. I'm sure you're all familiar with multi-tenancy. I can go in and look at my networking. Go to that tenant now. And I have a verf and a bridge domain. If you're not familiar with these concepts, uh, you might want to look into some ACI fundamentals here. I'll get rid of that thing there. I guess I could do that. Now looking in my APIC, which is my controller, I see that that tenant has been created because the APIs are talking to each other, they're pushing and pulling, and now we have all that information everywhere. I can go into my networking. I can see that default bridge domain and verf that's already been created automatically. Now you can get rid of these, you can get rid of them in the APIC, you can get rid of them in the vSphere uh, web UI. You can make your own, you can add more. That's kind of up to you in a design scenario. I can also do what are called application profiles. These are basically EPGs, contracts, and layer four through seven services. I just drag and drop an endpoint group down into my canvas, give it a name. Remember, all from the web UI. Let's call it EPG app test, because that's what every application tier has, right? I can select the distributed switch that I want to use, either the vSphere distributed switch or an AVS I've created. I select the bridge domain that I want to associate with that EPG. I can turn on intra-EPG isolation. We all like to talk about micro-segmentation. This will actually isolate your VMs within your endpoint group. And now I have a new EPG. I can also create what we're calling a micro-segmented EPG, or what looks like a USAG EPG, which we fondly call it. Say this is my web test. Now the USAG EPG is a little different. I set it up the same in the beginning. Still an endpoint group, still just contains VMs or bare metal endpoints, et cetera, et cetera. Give it a bridge domain. Maybe turn on entry EPG isolation. Maybe this is in my DMZ and I don't want those VMs talking to each other but I can also turn on uh, what we're calling micro-segmentation. Uh, you know, the terminology is a little weird, but whatever. Anyway, I can use VM attributes, I can use IP sets, I can use max sets to specify which VMs I want to automatically pull into these EPGs. Now, if you're having trouble conceptualizing EPGs, it's the same as a port group in this case. I'm gonna do it by operating system. Say all my Windows Server 2003 servers need patched, so I'm gonna specify that's the operating system that I want to pull into this EPG and maybe quarantine it for a little while until I go through and patch that zero day exploit. Click OK. And now I have that USAG EPG and every server with the operating system Windows Server 2003 was automatically pulled into that port group and the policy was assigned or lack thereof if you wanna quarantine automatically. I can also create contracts. Now, ACI is a whitelist model, meaning nothing can talk unless you allow it. Much more secure, right, than our, most of our traditional networking. So let's say I want to allow HTTP in between my web and app EPGs. Go ahead, put in HTTP. This is me creating a filter here. You could have several filters within a contract. You can have one per contract. Again, kind of a design thing up to you. I could also create these in the APIC and vice versa, and it will all show up. We, of course, have role-based access control for this as well. If you want to do read-only, you can do read-only, et cetera. So now I will create a contract between these two EPGs. Give it a name, maybe kind of a generic name like web because it contains HTTP. I could put HTTPS in there. I could put ICMP in there. 
whatever I want. Common services like DNS, DHCP. I go in and find that filter, drag it over. If I had other filters, I'd drag those over too. Yikes. I can make it bi-directional. So when you're configuring firewall rules and ACLs, you have to make two each time you want to make it bi-directional, right? With this, you just toggle on that bi-directionality and you're done. I can also include layer four through seven services. These can be physical, they can be virtual. We don't even care if they're Cisco. They don't have to be an ASA. It could be an F5 load balancer. It could be a Fortinet firewall, Juniper, anything you want it to be. That would get stitched in right into that contract. If you want deep packet inspection, stateful firewalling, load balancing, like I said, pretty much any layer four through seven service that you're going to want in your network. Now, just to ensure that this isn't all just magic, I'll go back into the APIC and show you that this has all been created. You can see my SAS test application profile has been created. I have my two EPGs, one regular, one micro-segmented, a contract in between, and they're both attached to the correct VMM domain, shown in that, by that little V at the bottom there. I can also do external connectivity. I can't create this within the vSphere web UI, but I can consume it if it's been created by my APIC admin already. So layer two, layer three, routed networks. Uh, again, I can consume layer four through seven services from the web UI. I can also do some troubleshooting. So I create a session name. I can do timing and all that. Uh, select a source, could be a virtual machine, could be an endpoint group, could be a network, could be even a port. I can actually do troubleshooting with the physical realm as well here. It doesn't just have to be VMs. I select Ubuntu Web 1, which is in my environment already. And I'll go ahead and select Ubuntu Web 2. Show defined policies. Well, what happens is I'm going to get an error that says these endpoints are in the same endpoint group. So let's say I'm having trouble pinging between the two. They can't communicate. Well, the problem might be because I have entry EPG isolation turned on, and that warning told me that. But let's show what, what this troubleshooter really does um, with the showing defined policies. If I go into my VMs and actually edit the settings here, Just to, I just left this in so you guys knew I actually do work with vSphere sometimes and <laughs> know what I'm talking about a little bit. I'm going to put them in different EPGs. Now, these EPGs look a little funny because they are, or port groups, I'm sorry. They look a little funny because they were actually created as EPGs. So it shows you exactly where they were created, what application profile they belong to, which tenant they belong to. And that's why they are separated by like those pipelines, right? So I put Ubuntu Web 1 in one EPG, and I'm going to put Ubuntu Web 2 in a different EPG. And again, let's say I'm having trouble uh, pinging between the two. We'll go back into the ACI plugin. Go back to our troubleshooting tool and do it all over again. Again, we're going to select Ubuntu Web 1 and Ubuntu Web 2. You can even see which EPGs they're in. It shows me there's Network Adapter 1, and that's in the database EPG. And the other one, I think, was in the app. We'll see. Yeah. So the other one, Network Adapter 1, is in the EPG app test. We could have other network adapters on these VMs that are in different EPGs we wanted. We can see that only HTTP is allowed by the contracts or by the filters. So that tells us that's why we can't ping. There's no ICMP protocol allowed. We can actually go into the virtual machines here as well and get some uh, both physical and virtual visibility here. So again, if I go to my Ubuntu Web 1 VM, I can see Network Adapter 1 is in the database EPG. It's got a health score of 100. Now, these are APIC health scores, not vCenter Ops health scores or vRealize Ops. I can see which tenant it is, it's in, and I can see which application profile it is, uh, is being applied. Same with Ubuntu Web 2. 
And that's about the gist of the vSphere uh, plugin for us. So thanks so much for watching. If you guys have questions for me, you know, I'll be around right after the next presentation I do. And uh, well, thanks again to V Brownbag as well.